All right, let's do an example where we're going to uh, average 10 sound sensor readings so that we can get an average sensor reading. So let's say my classroom is noisy and I want to go in and uh, take 10 sound sensor readings and then take the average of those 10 so I get the average sound level so in my classroom. And the way programmatically you do this, you create a sum variable equal to zero and I loop, this is a for loop, I created a for loop here, uh, with uh, i equals one to n, where n is this case, I wrote 10 because I'm gonna take 10 readings. And the way you do it is you read a current reading and you say the sum, the new sum equals the old sum plus the current and then you loop over. So you take the first reading, then add it to the second, then add it to the third, then add it to the fourth, then add it to the fifth, etc. And you create a running sum and at the end you divide it by 10. Take the total sum divided by 10. That's, what you, that's the way you take an average sound sensor reading. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I've got a for loop here, and I've created 10 as a constant because I want 10 loops. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our microphone because we're going to read the microphone sensor here. I'm going to say sound. And I'm going to create a, a couple placeholders for where variables are going to be so we can track where they're going here. So, so current is the current sound sensor reading. Of course, we have to have a new sum, and we're going to add the, the, the old sum, the current, to get the new sum, and at the end I'll take the average of this whole thing. All right, so I got the current, which is the current uh, sound sensor reading. I'm gonna add that to the old sum to get the new sum. When I'm all done, I'll divide that total sum by 10 to get the average. Okay, now I got these variables, I wanna start adding them together. So I'm gonna get some arithmetic functions here. So I'm gonna have to take the current and the old sum to add together to make the new sum. And I'm gonna have to divide the total by 10 to get the average. All right, so where do these come from? Well, the current comes from here. That's the current sound sensor reading. Now with the old sum and new sum, where do they come from? We're going to use this little thing called a shift register. So I'm going to right click on the border of my for loop. I'm going to say add shift register. All right, so the old sum is going to come out of here and it's going to complain for a second. Let's not worry about that. It'll, it'll, it'll correct itself in a second. And then my new sum's over here. All right, so what does this mean? This means that the old sum plus the current equals a new sum. And the way the shift register work is, works is anytime anything you put into this shift register on one loop comes out of this shift register on the next loop. So whatever you put in here on one loop comes out of here on the next loop. So what does that mean? Let's take reading one. Reading one plus nothing, because there's nothing in the sum. Reading one plus nothing equals a new sum. So new sum equals reading one. Stick that in here. Next one comes out here. So now you have reading one plus reading two on the second loop. Stick that in here. Now we have the sum of reading one and two plus reading three equals the new sum. And so you see whatever we stick in one end if one loop on the next loop comes out here, and that's exactly the way this for loop is running here. And that's basically a little variable called sum, which is getting passed from one to next. All right, so now at the end, I want to come in here and I say, okay, I want to take the total, which is all the sum of all the total, and I want to divide that by, what do I want to divide it by? Well, I, can, I want to divide it by 10, okay? And that's going to be the average, and I'm going to come out here, I'm going to say, okay, let's display this average. Uh, we'll display this, uh, and I, of course, I want to wait for a little while or else the display won't last very long on my screen. So I'm going to display this for, let's say, five seconds or something. All right, so we're almost ready to do this. That's five seconds. So I display this answer in the end for five seconds. I also want to display something on the inside because I want to actually show us what the current um, sum running total is as it goes through the loop. And I'm also going to slow this loop down because right now, if I do 10 loops, it's going it's to be over in, in the tenth of a second because it, it loops, of course, a thousand times a second. And it's very, very fast. So I'm going to go in here and delay. So I'll put in here half a second. So I'm going to take one reading every half a second for 10 readings that's sold. This whole thing lasts five seconds. And of course, I'll display the answer for five seconds. So my whole program will run 10 seconds. I almost forgot one more thing. I got to make sure that let's, 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 let's write the average to a different line so we can see both the, the sum and the average at the end. Okay, so now we're ready to go here. Let's go ahead and deploy this. So I'll go ahead and deploy. I'll bring up my remote display here so we can see what's going on. And I'm going to go ahead and run this. And then while it's running, I'll make a little noise or I'll be able to just continue talking into the microphone here so we can see there's the numbers, it's sum, so it's adding up. If I blow, it adds up very quickly. And so indeed, 497 was the sum and 49.7 was the average of the 10 readings. Okay, so that seems to be working appropriately. Now, uh, let's show you the second way, by the way, to, to create these shift registers. Um, I showed you the first way. So the, the second way to do it is actually to wire these in. So let's go ahead and do Control B, get rid of the bad wires. And I could actually sit there and actually, rather than creating the shift register directly, I can go here and create like what normally would be a tunnel. Right? Normally there'd be a uh, would be a tunnel. I want to put that into the uh, into the uh, the sum here. And I'm going to say replace with shift register. And then of course this would be coming out here, and it's going to go in there. And so I can either do right click, add shift register. 
or I can go ahead and convert that tunnel, any tunnel I write, into a shift register. Okay, so this pretty much works the way we want. Um, let's show you what can go wrong. All right, so here we go. So it turns out that the largest number you can have in the NXT is 32,768. That's the largest integer number we can have stored in memory. So what happens when the sum exceeds that? Well, some very strange things happen. So let's go ahead and make this loop larger. So I'm going to make this loop, say, uh, rather than 10, I'm going to make it... Uh, a thousand, so I'm going to loop, and, I'm, and rather than having to wait a long, long time, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, let's wait, um, let's, in fact, let's wait uh, like 0.01 seconds or something, something really small, so we don't have to wait a long time. All right, so here we go. Let's run this one more time. Again, it's going to be displaying this number live, so we want to watch this total and what happens when we start getting close to that 32,768. Okay, let's run this and see what happens. Getting close. 30,000. Oh, look at that. So it goes from positive 32,768 to minus 32,768, and now it's counting down back towards zero again. And of course, it's starting at zero and going back up. So um, if I blow on it again, it'll keep going. So it starts over. It's like rolling over a video game or something in the old days. So it starts at zero, goes up to 32,768, then 32,769 is the same as minus 32,768. And it starts crawling back its way back towards zero, and of course, and it starts over. So because the largest number you can have in the NXT is 32,768, you have to be very careful about adding up the sum because it can add up very, very quickly. If we didn't have uh, this wait for in there, you probably would never notice it. Let's say I said, oh, I want to average 1,000 readings. Well, let's see what happens when you try and average 1,000 readings. There we go. Average 1,000 readings. Look at that average. That average is minus 15.247. Now, how can you get an average of minus 15 from a sound sensor which can only read 0 to 100? It's because it rolls over. and That's a problem. So that's one thing that go wrong. you got to make sure you never exceed 32,768 is the magic number in this total because you can't store anything larger than that in the NXT. Okay, problem number two with for loops, not so much with shift registers, but for loops, if you've never worked with a for loop before, for loops are interesting because if, let's say I want to actually put the pink wire as it goes out. I want to wire it to this one. It's going to complain. It's complaining. And it's because it's complaining because we have this thing called auto-indexing. I'm not going to get into it now, but the way you fix this is tunnel mode. We don't want indexing. We don't want concatenating. We want to say pass out of the, out of the, out of the loop the last value. And so that will fix everything. So I'm not going to get into why it causes an error right now, but the way to fix the error whenever you pass anything out of a for loop. Now, it only happens with for loops. When you pass data out of a for loop, the default mode, tunnel mode, is indexing, which we don't want usually for, for Legos and NXTs. So we're going to change that to last value. So those are two things that can happen with for loops.